Roxo Media House. Out of the shotgun on first down to throw the football from the end zone. Slant caught. Johnson makes a man miss. 15, 20, 25, 30. Oh, here he goes. 40, 45. Still dragging defenders. 50 down to the 45 yard line. First and 10 TCU. You are in the state of the frogs. Presented by the Railhead Smokehouse with TCU head coach Sonny Dykes. And also brought to you by Hub Fort Worth, Old Trapper Beef Jerky, Texas Health Resources, and by Cadillac. Now with the coach, here is the voice of the Frogs, Brian Estridge. State of the Frogs for this week starts right now with the head coach Sonny Dykes alongside us. The Frogs 5-0 in the season, 13th ranked in the country. Coming off that big win over the Kansas Jayhawks, we start the show here in Coach Dykes' office by saying simply this, Kansas is better. Oh, yeah. I mean, Kansas <laughs> just a lot better. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, what can you say about those guys? I mean, they've done, they've done a remarkable job. Um, really, really good football team. You know, we knew they were going to be good. Uh, you could see it on film, and we got up there. They were probably better than we thought they were going to be, quite frankly. And, you know, just a good football team. Play really, really smart football, tough football. Um, you know, that was a, it was a good football game, too. Pretty evenly matched teams that were playing well. And those guys um, – I mean, they, they play very, very hard and don't make many mistakes, so they're tough to beat. I thought it was a good day for the Big 12. You, you had uh, college game day there. You had two unbeatens meeting uh, on their network, and, and I thought kind of lived up to the bill and gave everybody what they wanted. Yeah, yeah, it was a good football game. I mean, I think it was a very entertaining game, and, yeah. you know, you saw a little bit of everything. You saw defense in the first half. Mm-hmm. You saw a lot of offense, uh, particularly in the third quarter and in the second half. And, you know, just two good football teams playing, winning football. There weren't a ton of penalties. We only had one penalty on right. the day, and – you know, which I thought was a key. And, you know, it was, it was pretty much mistake-free football and two good teams just slugging it out. We smiled. Uh, Brett Yormark, the uh, Big 12 commissioner, was there at, at the game. And when he's there, the flags don't come out nearly as well. <laughs> yeah, much. it's interesting how that works. It yeah, is. it is. Yeah, <laughs> kind of had a sense before the game that there might not be a whole lot of flags. <laughs> All right, so you had two really good teams. Here's <laughs> the one thing that stood out to me, Coach, and you brought this up earlier in the week at a Frog Club meeting when you said, hey, we faced adversity at one point, down 17 to 10. Your team did not blink at all. Yeah, they did a good job of, of hanging in there. The third quarter didn't start the way we wanted it to. Um, you know, Kansas uh, really did a good job. You know, had a, strung a couple of drives together, had some big plays. We, we missed some tackles on a couple of those drives, which is a little bit uncharacteristic for us. We've been tackling pretty well this year and had a couple of long runs. A couple of times, really, we had two or three guys that got there and knocked each other off, you know, which was a little bit unusual. But – um, but anyway, they, they did a good job and, and took the lead, and our guys came back and answered. I think that was a, a big, big drive for us, gave us some momentum back, got the game back going again. And, and then I think we got a little bit settled in uh, better defensively. You know, Kansas did a good job keeping us on our heels for the most part in the second half in particular. Uh, they, that scheme's tough. They do a good job, you know, knock the quarterback out, and the guy comes in, and Bean comes in and plays really, really well, right. threw the ball probably better than Daniels could have thrown it. And so, anyway, it was it was, uh, it was was challenging for us, but you got to give it up. I mean, we, we got to stop at the end of the game when we needed to defensively, and then we scored touchdowns on four of our last five possessions to be able to close the game out, so that was big. You know, we, I've asked you before what keeps you up at night, and you said part of it is how does your team react when they face adversity. You had it there on the scoreboard. It's down 17 to 10. Also, you had to face a tough atmosphere. I mean, that was a loud stadium. It was a hostile environment, and your guys sort of stayed pad level the whole time. They did. They did, and it was. I mean, you, you kind of kind of laugh about that being Kansas, and they probably aren't known for that, but that was a very, very good college football environment. The crowd was loud. Uh, you could tell it was really fueling their players and energizing those guys. And, you know, as I said earlier, that was a that was a, a really a, an impressive effort by Kansas. I mean, they played very, very hard. They played good football, and, and we had to we had to play at a high level to have a chance to beat them. Well, the other thing I made a couple of notes on it was it was a physical game too. I mean, it, it, guys were throwing their bodies around. Yeah, it was. It was both sides. I mean, that's you know those guys played played tough football, and you know their offensive line did a nice job. Their their, their scheme is so good and so unique, and you know they made a bunch of plays, and then they made plays in their passing game, which. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they had, a lot of times they were covered and guys just made really, really good plays. It's funny you mentioned that because I had also written down the KU offensive line. Coach Dykes didn't lie. You told us going in that they were going to be really good. Yeah, yeah, they're good. I mean, that's a good group. They play hard. As I said, the scheme does a really good job of allowing those guys to play, play well. And it's just unique. It's different. you got to play a little bit on your heels just because you're it's assignment football. And then they show you the same look over and over and over again. And just when you think, okay, here I go. They're going to do something off of it, which they did a couple of times. Caught us on some, some switch routes on verticals and different things. And, you know, it's, uh, it's tough to defend. All right. It's as if I've just won a bet because we went three and a half minutes 
without mentioning Quentin Johnston. I mean, uh, that probably should have been topic number one. What a day he had. Yeah, yeah, he had the day that I think we've all kind of been waiting for and expecting. And, you know, to, to Quentin's credit, he came out and had a great practice last week, great week of practice. I mean, he had a, you know, our Tuesday team period, we do a, we do a drill at the very beginning, a tempo drill where we go, you know, good on good, four plays to set the tempo for practice. And, and Max you know, dropped back and threw four balls. Quentin caught all four of them on Tuesday and kind of continued to build from there. And he just had a sense that, that he was getting ready to have that breakout week. Um, just really practiced at a high level. You could see Max's confidence in him and the game plan were both really strong. And, and so, you know, he went out and delivered on Saturday, and that's what you expect a ca player of his caliber to do. All right, you start from the beginning. We take a look at some highlights in this ball game. getting the football to Quentin Johnston early, and you settle for three here out of the block. Griffin Kale knocks it in from 39 yards. Out. Yeah, yeah, it was a big kick. I mean, Gr Griffin hit that well, had a, you know, had a lot of confidence. I thought it was a good drive. We just kind of stalled. Um, stalled out at the end, but uh, you know we got to do a good job finishing those. We got into a little bit of a fourth and long situation. Um, you know, considered ha had that conversation on third down. If we could get it down to third and manageable, we'd go for it, and it didn't work, and so we ended up kicking on fourth. Defense holds. You get the ball back. <clears throat> Max with a long run. I thought he scored here. Uh, Kendra punches it in from a yard out, though he gets credit for the score. Yeah, yeah, that was it's a heck of a run by Max. Um, you know, he did a nice job running all day. I mean, yeah. he really did. He. he that was one of those plays where you know was going to do something else. Ended up ended up having to run the football with with the way the play played out, and and uh, you know Max did a really good job of staying within the framework of the of the offense, but also you know making some good decisions and, and doing some things on the run as well. There's not a nicer guy on the off the field than Max Duggan, but that was a perfect example there. I, I, there's an edge to Max. When oh yeah, you get no. inside the lines. Yeah, yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, he plays he plays. Uh, he plays hard and yeah. tough, and he's got he's got definitely got a spark, and people feed off of it. All right, Kansas answers with a field goal of their own. Then uh, the uh, big pass to the tight end. Their, their tight ends are really good, by the way. Yeah, yeah, those guys do a good job, and they do a good job of uh, figuring out how to use them, and yeah. you know, delay routes, and you know, like I said, switch verts, and you know, running guys across the field, showing action one way, and bringing somebody back deep drags. I mean, they just do a lot of different ways to to kind of hide those guys, and then get them in routes late, and and just get the defense. Uh, show them a picture of one thing, and then when you're doing something else, and, and that's what their offense does so well. All right, and then uh, we're obviously talking about second-half action now as you, you, you see them in the third quarter start to get a little momentum. They get that touchdown to Fairchild, and then this one that Luke Grimm uh, puts them up 17-10. to 10. Luke Grimm is a guy who just runs perfect routes, it looks like. Yeah, yeah, you know, the, the thing that they did, a lot of t tough catches, contested yes. catches, uh, went up and caught the ball, um, you know, in traffic. Um, and so that's – you know, when you, when you have a team that's doing that, man, they, they can be tough to beat. And they just kind of get that momentum, and they start making those plays and have confidence in them, and the quarterback starts giving guys more opportunities to do that. And all of a sudden, it can be that uh, that snowball that gets started that you can't get stopped. And how many times have we talked about this? The Horn Frog need the Horn Frogs need a big play. Get it in the hands of Darius Davis. Yeah, yeah no, he, he does what he does. I mean, he makes big plays, and we've got to continue to find ways to get him the football because he's just one of those guys. Every time he touches it, something good happens. And... And, uh, you know, showed his speed down the sideline. Still don't really know how he stayed in bounds. I, I think most of the Kansas players in the bench thought that he stepped out of bounds. But the uh, replay shows he didn't, and it was a heck of a play. Yeah, that was just a minute three on that drive. You come right back with Max on the ground. That drive was five plays. Just, you got the short field, obviously. Uh, just took a minute off, and then Max scores. Yeah, we get the turnover. Uh, Jamoy gets the interception, and, and we get a good short field, as you said. And then Max does a nice job. Good, it was a good good play call. You know, we showed, showed pass, and then Max ended up – uh, run a quarterback draw and stuck it in the end zone, which was a big play for us, and got that momentum back and took the lead back. And I think that to me was when I think we all got settled in and said, okay, look, we're going to find a way to win this game. 24-17 at this point. Kansas is not done. Skinner hooks up uh, with Bean for a 38-yard score. And then it was Tay Barber's turn, 25-yarder. <laughs> I thought this was a great route he ran. Tay it was, yeah. It was kind of a, a flood route where we ran a, a post, a wheel, and another wheel stop. And Max made a heck of a throw. I mean, it basically had a little box you could throw it in, made it made a, a really big time throw, and then Tay went up and, and caught the ball in traffic, made a heck of a catch. And you know, Tay's not the biggest guy in the world, but boy, he played big on that play. Yeah, went up high to get it, as you said, Quentin Skinner uh, on another touchdown reception in the fourth quarter with 4:21 to go. This one ties it at 31 apiece, and then. Quentin Johnston, there it is. His lone touchdown of the day could not have come at a bigger time. The 24-yarder from Max here to close out a six-play, 68-yard drive. When you needed it the most, you took 236 off the clock. Yeah, we did. I mean, we were you know, kind of getting to that point where we thought about kind of slowing down and trying to maybe kick a field goal, yeah. burn some clock. But 
Um, you know, had a great matchup. Max did a great job throwing the ball to Quentin. Quentin did a great job going up and making a play. You know, obviously there was pass interference on the play, but Quentin just stayed with it and made a heck of a catch in the end zone. And it was one of those uh, one of those plays that uh, big time plays that big time players make. And he he did it, and we needed it, and it was a game winner for us. Well, you mentioned too a big uh, stop late in that second half. Marcel Brooks, I thought, uh, what a huge play. Looked like there was going to be an opening there for the quarterback Bean, but that gap closed quickly. Yeah, it did. I mean, Bean can really run too, and. You know, he kind of had the angle there, and Marcel closed it down, made a heck of a tackle, and, you know, got him into fourth down, and we were able to stop him on fourth. So it was a big, big stop for our defense. Um, you know, I, I think uh, I think it just shows you kind of the, the competitive nature of our football team. We, we, we're trying to trying to find ways to do what it takes to win football games, and you got to win a couple like that to have a great season. And so it was a – it was a grinder on the road and a big win for our program, and we're excited about the next one. All right, 38-31, the final in this one. Still to come here on State of the Horn Frogs, we've got an opportunity to uh, get your what's your beef question of the weekend with Coach Dykes, plus a preview of Oklahoma State and our one-play breakdown as we continue after this timeout. The Hub Fort Worth family is a passionate, energetic team of insurance professionals that have the same common goal in mind, helping businesses and individuals protect their health, property, and financial well-being. Their objective is to maximize the options available to businesses, families, and individuals while helping you make the choices that suit each unique situation and challenge. Their clients look to them for guidance in navigating the cumbersome world of insurance and investments. Their experience and personal relationships combined with their creativity enables them to craft solutions that fit your specific circumstances. Their guiding principle is, don't tell me how much you know, just show me how much you care. Since their founding in 1966, they've enhanced their offerings to include a comprehensive range of services, including employee benefits, property and casualty, and personal lines insurance. Follow them and learn more on their social media pages. You can find them on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn at Hub Fort Worth. Old Trapper Beats. Oh, One cool. upping. <laughs> I'm a big Old Trapper fan. <laughs> Not bigger than me. I love Old Trapper. I love how tender it is. Don't forget the wood smoke flavor. What about the clear bag? That shows you exactly what you're getting. Savory beef. Quality ingredients. I'm their biggest fan. I'm their biggest I'm fan. Their... Old Trapper, what's your beef? The official beef jerky of the Big 12. Will you sign my bag and my tattoo? For exclusive interviews and content on TC Recruits, subscribe now at frogstoday.com. Any sport, anytime it's your source for all things tcu only on frogstoday.com back we come here it is our what's your beef question of the week brought to us by our friends at old tramper let's check in with hunter he's a tcu student from here in fort worth what is your plan to get people to stay here and also bring in new recruiting classes how can you counter these kids million dollar deals at other schools and what what attracts people to tcu football all right, kind of a three-part question there from Hunter. All about recruiting. I guess the bottom line is, how do you get them here? How do you keep them? Well, the big thing you got to do is it's, you got to maintain your roster, and, and you do that by building a culture where guys enjoy enjoy playing. You know, the students love going to school here. If you're just a regular student here at TCU, you have a great experience. It's a, it's a very um, a customer-friendly place to go to school. Our, our players really, really enjoy being a student here. Obviously, the football part of it's really good. We take great care of the guys. Uh, we have a culture where they enjoy being around each other. That helps retain the players. Obviously, there's, uh, you know, the NIL stuff is very tempting for some guys, but if you really enjoy where you are, then chances are you're not going to be looking around. And then the recruiting is kind of the same thing. We get the guys on campus, we show them what we have, get them around our players and our coaching staff and share our vision with them and, you know, want to ensure that they want to come be a part of this. And, you know, you'd be surprised how many kids just want to have a chance to go to college and play football, and it's not necessarily all about the money. It's more about about the experience of finding the right fit. Well, good fit here for TCU for a lot of guys, as we've talked about before. Uh, retention, not been that hard so far here at, in, in Horn Frog Country. Thanks to a 5-0 start, that continues. You've got uh, Oklahoma State coming up. We'll talk to Coach about them coming up a little bit later. First, though, it's our one-play breakdown with Coach Bowden, and it happens next. Old Trapper Beats, oh, one-upping. Oh. <laughs> I'm a big Old Trapper fan. <laughs> Not bigger than me. I love Old Trapper. I love how tender it is. Don't forget the wood smoke flavor. What about the clear bag? That shows you exactly what you're getting. Savory beef. Quality ingredients. I'm their biggest fan. I'm their biggest I'm fan. Their... Old Trapper, what's your beef? The official beef jerky of the Big 12. 
Will you sign my bag and my tattoo? Simply the best barbecue in Fort Worth. Dine-in, catering, or drive through 2900 Montgomery, just off I-30. Remember, the best barbecue in Fort Worth is at Railhead Smokehouse. The Flying Tea Club provides the everyday TCU fan and alum the ability to specifically support TCU student athletes. Flying Tea Club offers three levels of memberships. The Flying Tea Club is a nonprofit organization supporting the brand development of TCU student athletes through a series of unique event based networking opportunities, which are exclusive to our members. These events provide a great social engagement tool for our members and student athletes alike. Follow them on Instagram at Flying Tea Club or online at flyingteaclub.com. Texas-based Happy Water offers the best tasting sugar-free kids drink ever made. Happy Water comes in four delicious flavors that you can find at local retailers and on Amazon. Each pouch contains zero grams of sugar, zero calories, and zero percent juice. Head to happydrinks.com for more information and to purchase Happy Water. That's H-A-P-I drinks.com. Live happy. Be happy. Drink happy. State of the Frogs continues here from Sonny Dykes' office. It is our one-play breakdown right now. Coach David Bowden joins us from back at the Flying Tea Club Studios. All right, I want to go late in the game, Coach. Let's go to that last Kansas drive. They've got it third down and ten here. They've got a score to tie this ball game. And it looks like they're pretty confident with this call. Now, break it down for me. Yes, that's right, Brian. The, the Jayhawks were a lot more confident in this play call, which is actually the same exact play, that mesh play that they ran with the Jamoy Hodge interception in the third quarter. Only on that play, TCU had drop eight. Okay, so they dropped eight into coverage. It was zone coverage. And Jamoy came up with the interception. The receiver didn't sit down in the hole. He kept running. So they come back to that with 49 seconds to go. They have formation into the boundary. So this is the boundary to start with. They set the formation here, motion their tight end across. As soon as they did that, they saw uh, their uh, TCU safety follow him across. That was their indicator that TCU was in man-to-man -man underneath. They're actually in man-free coverage. They only brought four. Uh, we saw the uh, free safety get down the middle of the field, so you knew that was the free safety. And then we had Jamoy Hodge blitz this time, so he, he kept pressure here with, for a four-man rush. And so they, they were confident that you really want to run that mesh play against man-to-man -man underneath. That's the call um, that, that you wanted against. Early on in the game, when they had it in drop eight, they weren't so confident. But here they thought, okay, now we've got Marcel Brooks matched up on the, on the um, uh, tailback man-to-man. -man. Also, one other thing to note, Earlier on in that third, uh, third quarter play that I referred to, they had an in-breaking route. He ran more of a square in there. This time, you could tell he went right for Marcel's toes to create that rub route to get the tailback out to the field and, and to get some space to get him the ball on a key third down. So what was most impressive about this play then from TCU's perspective? Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you what was most impressive for me on this is just Marcel Brooks. I mean, sometimes even if you have the, the right play called and, and you think you know, it's, it's exactly the matchup that you want, you just have to be a football player, and Marcel does exactly that. So he's got him man-to-man. -man. He knows that right now. He sees this, this, ball come, uh, this receiver coming in to pick him. And, and usually when you tell a linebacker, if you're going to go underneath the block, and this is true in the run game as well, if you go underneath the line of scrimmage, just say here, if it was a run play, the ball's here. You usually want to go cross face and go across a, a top of the blocker. If you go underneath, the, the saying usually is if you're going to take it, you need to make it. I mean you, mean, you need to make the play, and that's exactly what Marcel does here. He goes underneath the block, but the speed of Marcel to the sideline, okay, he, he goes all the way to the sideline and hawks him down for only a one-yard gain to then go from third and ten to fourth and nine, which TCU then gets to stop and to win the game. But this right here, it was just impressive stuff and the speed of Marcel Brooks took him down on this one. I think we all thought Marcel was going to have a breakout game. Did it on that play against Kansas. Thank you, Coach David Bowden, for the breakdown there. Speaking of breaking down, let's start to break down the next opponent for the Horned Frogs. Oklahoma State is up next at 2.30 for TCU. Coach Sonny Dykes rejoins us here on State of the Frogs next. We'll talk about the Cowboys after this timeout.
simply the best barbecue in Fort Worth. Dine-in, catering, or drive through 2900 Montgomery, just off I-30. Remember, the best barbecue in Fort Worth is at Railhead Smokehouse. Say hello to the water of tomorrow, Richard's Rainwater. Richard's Rainwater is 100% rain, refreshing, renewable, and the only ingredient we use in our water. Why rain? Because everyone deserves access to clean water, and rain is a 100% renewable resource available everywhere. Drink the rain. Save the planet. Shop now at richardsrainwater.com. Old Trapper Beats. Oh, One cool. upping. <laughs> I'm a big Old Trapper fan. <laughs> Not bigger than me. I love Old Trapper. I love how tender it is. Don't forget the wood smoke flavor. What about the clear bag? That shows you exactly what you're getting. Savory beef. Quality ingredients. I'm their biggest fan. I'm their biggest I'm fan. Their... Old Trapper, what's your beef? The official beef jerky of the Big 12. Will you sign my bag and my tattoo? State of the Frogs continues right now here from Coach Dykes' office. All right, Oklahoma State comes to town on Saturday, 2.30 kick, ABC, right here at Amon Carter Stadium. This place is going to be packed, you have to believe. This will be the toughest test of the year so far, right? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, this is this is the most complete football team we've played. Uh, you know, it begins with a quarterback. Spencer Sanders has a ton of experience, started a lot of football games. You know, and really, honestly, it begins with, with Mike Gundy, just uh, the program he's built there. Got a lot of respect for what he's done. I think 16 consecutive bowl seasons, which is really crazy uh, in today's college football world. And, you know, he just runs a really good program. The guys play hard. They're well coached. They have uh, they know what they want to do to win football games. They're always going to be good up front on their offensive and defensive front. You can tell they do a great job with the strength and conditioning program. They bring in guys. They develop them. Uh, and they go out and they execute their offensive and defense at a high level. And they're just always a really good football team. But, again, they, they they're always – Scoring points, they always do a good job on uh, running the football, and it really begins with their quarterback and then and then their offensive line, and they always find good skill players and find unique ways to, to score points and move the ball. Last year, you, or last week, I should say, you saw dual threat quarterbacks. Really, both of them were were that. Does that help you this week preparing for Spencer? Who can be that? Yeah, it's a, it's a different scheme. Yeah. You know, this scheme is probably a little bit closer to what we do in in a lot of ways. Um, but yeah, I mean, it certainly helps. Anytime you face, you know running quarterbacks back-to-back -back weeks or consecutive weeks it gives you a little bit better chance uh, to defend them uh, I just think it gets you thinking that way and you know Sanders does such a great job he doesn't run that often but when he does run he's very effective you know he, he gets a lot of big plays they run him on third down they run him in the red zone the goal line they're pretty selective about when they run him but when they do he has a lot of success you, you talk about balance and coaches like balance on offense I'm looking at Oklahoma State's numbers they run the football 192 times They've thrown it 192 times. That's balance. Yeah, yes, it is. Some of it has been because of the game's probably run a little bit more. Because I'm assuming when you look at their offense, they would be more like 60-40 pass to run. Yeah, yeah, I think a lot of it comes, like you said, they've, they've had leads. They've, yeah. they, you know, second half of ball games, they've probably done a little bit more run heavy than they were early in games. But, you know, they're always going to run the ball. I mean, that's a trademark of Gundy's teams is, is you know, they're going to be physical up front. They're going to have a good back, and they're going to run it and, and commit to running it and play action and do the stuff that good football teams do, you know. And because of that, they're really good in the red zone. Numbers they always are. stand out. Yeah, yeah, they do a good job executing. I think a lot of that has to do with just the experience the quarterback has and, and the comfort he has in their scheme and what they're doing. You know, the one thing that Mike Gundy's always done, kind of like you, is go out and find the best defensive coordinator you can find. And he's done I, I really like Derek Mason, the D.C., former head coach of Vanderbilt. Yeah, yeah, Derek's a really smart guy. He's always, always had good defenses. Uh, you know, he was a defensive coordinator at Stanford for a number of years, had a tremendous amount of success there. They played great defense. And, you know, Derek does a great job of, of you know, giving you different looks and, and keeping you off balance just enough to, to create a little bit of uh-oh type of thing. You know, you just never really get too settled when you play them. And they got a, they got a talented team. Again, their defensive front's probably the strength of their group. I, I like the way that those guys play. They're physical. They're big. Uh, they're long. You know, they're athletic. The two defensive ends are rangy. You know, they can get out and they can make plays. And, and then they, you, they have what you expect on the back end. Got some length at the safety position and, and some corners that really uh, can run. And so it's a good group overall. All right, uh, going into week six now, does anything change for your team as far as priorities to be good? 
No, I don't think so. I think we just got to keep on doing what we've been doing. I mean, I think it's, you know, for us, it's always about ourselves, getting ourselves ready to play, have a great week of practice and preparation. You know, liked what we did on Sunday. And so we just got to grind it out this week and, you know, get a bunch of guys in here through the course of the week doing extra things, taking care of themselves off the field and, you know, all the little things that are important to us. And, and then go out there and earn it on Tuesday and Wednesday and have a great walkthrough on Thursday and go have a great run through on Friday. And that's kind of been our formula. And, Go play hard Saturday and see what happens. It's going to be super fun on Saturday, too. Yeah, I think so. It should be a great home crowd, a great environment. I think our, our students will be excited. I know our players will enjoy, you know, playing against a really good team here at, here at home. And so I think our guys are fired up. All right, Coach. Thanks for the time. Okay, appreciate oh, you guys. Always good to should see you. Should be a good one. Yes, Coach Sonny Dykes joining us here for State of the Frogs this week. Uh, we'll be back again next week with highlights of Oklahoma State and a preview of the Kansas State Wildcats. That's a 7 o'clock game, by the way, here in two weeks. But work to be done this week. Frogs in Oklahoma State at 2.30 on Saturday. We'll see you here for that. For the head coach, Sonny Dykes, I'm Brian Esther. See you next week. Roxo Media House.